Hello and welcome to a Wheels Boy quick review of a vehicle that I've been wanting to talk about for quite some time, the Buick GL8. The GL8 is a luxury MPV that is only available here in the Chinese market, where it competes with the likes of the Toyota Alphard as well as the Rowe IMAX 8, both of which we previously reviewed here on the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you a look at how it stacks up against the competition and what you might be missing out on because you can't buy it in your market. Let's get started. It might be hard to believe, but by the standards of the luxury MPV segment here in the Chinese market, the front end styling of the GL8 is positively conservative. Both the IMAX 8 and the Toyota Alphard have these absolutely insane, monstrous grills that stretch from the edge of the hood here all the way down to the bottom of the bumper. The GL8, in comparison, is relatively simple with a more traditional upper and lower area. This one bisected by this nice, I would say kind of airplane wing looking uh, chrome element and of course the big Buick logo in the middle. The other thing I would like to point out is the headlights which I find to be very attractive. They have kind of a, a jewel or diamond like look to them. Chrome continues to be a theme here on the side with this nice chrome strip that actually extends all the way around the entire length of the vehicle. This is the Avenir spec which is this includes this special color this dark red that you see here. Uh, much like I'm sure the Buicks that are available in your country, the Avenir is the top line spec for Buicks here in China. If we head around to the back, we will see another chrome strip, of course. And if we open up the rear, one of the things that surprised me the most about the GL8 was the amount of rear cargo space. One of the things I complained about when it came to the Alphard and indeed the IMAX 8 was the relative lack of space behind the third row. That's not true with the GL8. You could place several suitcases here. This is due in no small part, I'm sure, to the fact that it is noticeably longer than either the IMAX 8 or the Alphard at slightly more than 5.2 meters compared to the slightly less than 5 meters of the Alphard and the slightly more than 5 meters of the uh, IMAX 8. I'm sure that space inside will probably be noticeably larger as well. Speaking of the interior, we are now in the front seat of the GL8. Here we have two screens that look to be about probably 10.25 inches both. Um, material qualities. So I think what really separates the GL8 from the likes of the Toyota Alphard is the kind of styling ethos that you see. Whereas the Alphard is a very conservative, simple black with some touches of plastic or, or metal, um, but relatively high quality materials. The interior of the GL8 is a little bit more eye-catching. You have this black wood texture stuff here. You have these patterns here that are also repeated on this pattern of the seat. Overall material quality, I would say, is slightly under that of Toyota Alphard, but overall much more interesting to look at. That includes this very nice uh, color palette, this light top and dark color here that matches the exterior color. My only major complaint when it comes to the interior, and I'm really not sure why they do this, is here is a lot of the controls for things like the uh, climate, uh, and they're all on this black uh, piano black plastic. Let me, sorry, tell the car to shut up for a second. Um, and it has this kind of capacitive or haptic touch system where you hit it and it buzzes. Now, what that feels like to me is nothing more than this whole piece just being loose. Whenever it moves and you touch a button, it just feels like the whole piece is loose. It doesn't feel particularly high quality, and it also gets really dirty really quickly. Of course, what really matters on these cars is the rear seat experience. That's why you buy them. One thing you will notice that it doesn't have is the kind of amazing floating uh, armrest or center console that was in the IMAX 8, complete with T-set. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, I really suggest you go watch that video because it's kind of amazing. There are, however, plenty of other features. You have adjustable seats in all the directions that you would expect. Things like adjustable bolstering as well, moving front and rear, as well as here, a very nice, and I must say, much sturdier than I would expect table. Overall, I would say it compares quite well to the Comfort and the Toyota Alphard. 
Let's have a look at the third row. That was a weakness that I noticed in both the Alphard and the IMAX 8. So I'm curious if that remains true here. Well, wow. First thing I noticed, this is a six seater model, whereas the Alphard, I believe we tested was a seven seater. So it was a rear bench. These seats are remarkably comfortable. Even in this reclined and uh, kind of moved backward position, I still have a decent amount or plenty of leg room. And I would say it's, wow, much more comfortable than the Alphard. One other thing that I want to point out is that third row passengers also have heated and cooled seats, something I have not seen in very many other cars before. Underneath the hood of the Buick GL8 is a two liter turbocharged four cylinder making 174 kilowatts and 350 newton meters of torque. That's the equivalent of 237 horsepower and 275 pound feet. Back to, backing that up rather is a nine speed automatic transmission with manual shift through the paddles here. The combination of the turbocharged engine with the relatively slow downshifts from the nine speed means that there's a decent amount of lag when it comes time for acceleration, but power never feels inadequate. This is a big, big, big car. You don't expect it to be fast. It does feel fast enough. Um, I imagine if you loaded it down with people, it would get slower, but still certainly good enough for daily use. If you've ever driven a Buick anywhere else, really any kind of Buick, especially a Buick SUV or something, you will know how this thing drives. It's very, very soft, uh, tons and tons of body roll, but the good side of that is that it goes over bumps quite well. One thing I will say, and one way that it lags a little bit behind the Alphard is we say NVH, right? Noise, vibration, harshness. Well, noise and harshness, we're good to go. This is a very quiet interior, but the vibrations, I do feel like I get a lot more of the uh, imperfections in the road transmitted through the bottoms of my feet when I'm driving in this car, especially compared to the Toyota Alphard. One small thing that I want to complain about, but it's something that bothers me a lot when I see it in other cars, so I have to mention it, is it's really hard to turn on the uh, heating and cooled seats. This feels like a, a kind of a silly thing to complain about, but honestly, it's a feature that you use very frequently and it is buried three layers deep in the menu. I just hate that. Of course, the best and really only way to experience this class of vehicle is here in the rear seat. I mentioned some of the features uh, when we talked about the interior before, but some other things I want to talk about is we have, of course, our adjustability for our uh, air conditioning or climate control here. We have this very large sunroof that makes this a much airier interior, I think, than that of the Toyota Alphard or the IMAX 8 that we experienced uh, previously on the channel. The seats themselves genuinely very comfortable, especially when you really lounge out and raise up the lower leg bolstering. The other thing, of course, down here, we have not one, but two USB ports for charging. Very convenient. Uh, and of course, this is an American car, so there are cup holders galore on the door, here in between the seats, and over there on the other door as well. As an American, I love it. I mentioned before that the driving experience of the GLA can best be described as soft. And while that doesn't make for a fun and engaging time behind the wheel, it does make for a great time here in the back seats. This car has a very soft suspension, independent rear suspension. The previous generation of a GLA was a, a torsion beam, but this is a real upgrade from the previous one. It feels very comfortable, very isolated, very quiet. Uh, I've been filming for a while now. It's been hot out. All I want to do is fall asleep in this seat. Throughout this video, I've been comparing this car to the Toyota Alphard. And while they are competing in the same segment, I do have to say they are absolutely miles apart when it comes to price. The starting price of a Buick GL8 is around thirty-six dollars to $37,000. This top spec Avenir trim in the six seater version is seventy-two dollars or $73,000. That seems like a lot until you learn that a uh, starting price of a Toyota Alphard is around 810,000 RMB or in excess of 100,000, 100, maybe even over 120,000 
dollars. That's a lot of money. And that's before you consider the fact that those cars are so popular that you often have to do what the Chinese call jia jia or pay more on top of the starting price or the base price in order to actually get an allotment for the car. Like it's a Porsche GT3 or something. So in that respect, I have to applaud the view of GL8 for doing something, again, very American. More space, more bang for your buck. It's commonly known that the sales of Buicks here in the Chinese market far, far outstrip that of them in any other market, including the United States. It's no wonder that Chinese people online often say that Chevrolet is the global brand, Buick, well, Buick is a Chinese brand. In that respect, I understand why Buick has made this exclusively available here in the Chinese market, but I have to say, I think it really could compete in other markets where large MPVs like this are popular, including places like Southeast Asia. Will they begin selling it there? I have no idea. We'll just have to wait and find out. All right, thanks for watching today's video. Be sure to check us out on Instagram and Facebook, and as always, like, subscribe, and hit the bell.